explain to them why you're doing it better and that you want to work with them. At least that's what I did until I was able to build something that could be better than anything I could ever imagine as a student when I was in high school. Like when I think about what we do and I see the kids and their faces and the letters that they write me and our social network, which I'll get to when, when we talk about um, like how it works in the classroom, but they write things and they tell me things that really, it changes the way you think about it. Because yes, at the end of the day, it's a business, makes money, but also you're inspiring people mm -hmm. like every day. And that is the craziest thing. Like, I was never inspired in high school in, in any way. Like, so even if it was like two days a week to be inspired, that would be the greatest thing in my life. Mm -hmm. as a student. That, that sounds amazing too. And of course, when you went to high school and the high schools they had now, how do you, how do you compare the high schools back then and the high schools today? Well, so it's interesting. The high schools back then had less technology than they do today. But the, it, the, the craziest thing is right now, they have technology and have no idea how to use it. Uh -huh. It's the most craziest thing. So, yeah, the content changed. You know, the, see, the one thing that did change is teachers got paid less. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. That means that they care less. And if you have a teacher that cares less, that means the learning drops because curriculums are not regulated across the Department of Education, which means – you could teach pretty much whatever you want if your principal allows it, which is not good. Uh huh. Because that means a uh, uh, someone who teaches science may end up teaching math tomorrow, which is crazy because they're like, I teach science. Mm hmm. So and so now I have to Yeah. So it sounds like so it's like the teachers back in the day were pretty much interchangeable, unlike the days of many years ago. Yet a specialist, like a specialist yeah. science teacher who specialized or specialize in math, specialize in physical education, specialize in history, it's all pretty much interchangeable parts. And it sounds like it pretty much messed up the dynamic of things. Well, what happened was, you know, teachers got paid less and staff decreased. So now there's one teacher for a group of five special ed classes that need special ed attention. There's one teacher. There should be five. Uh -huh. That's the right. That makes perfect sense too. And of course, the technology that you experienced back in the day. What was the most uh, utilized in terms of technology, and what was considered the most obsolete, or what was the most frustrating piece of technology back then? So you're talking when I was in high school. Correct. Yes. Like say with um. You know, like say we throw out there, you know, DVD players or say like with, um, you know, you know Blu-ray or like say um, digital audio tape, which is like pretty much extinct like the dinosaurs. And, um, you know, just some other things like the um, three gun projectors. Yes, I'd be, rolled in, I'd be rolled in a movie to watch. They don't do that, that anymore because it's not effective. Uh -huh. Like watching video is entertainment. And the only way it's not entertainment is if you're experientially learning, which does not happen on a 2D TV. Mm -hmm. I don't care how big it is. Like, unless you can go back to World War II, look around, be like, okay, here's what's going on, freeze time, then let it play off. Then when you're confused, rewind it, and then pause it and look around, and then write your term paper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I remember those days, too. It's like, yeah, the pause, rewind, fast forward, and everything else. And, of course, with the new uh, web guys, you're yeah. pretty much involved. You don't have oh, to rewind. Yeah. It's like you can just be immersed in it. Exactly. Ex and the thing that, that's crazy is I, I, don't I don't know how I didn't realize this, but if anyone disputes the effectiveness of things like this, like just if you try it once, the right app, at, like with the right mental state, if you're trying to learn, I mean, having an experience – automatically beats being taught because when you're being taught you automatically put friction up because maybe you think the teacher doesn't know what she's talking about and you know better mm -hmm. but when you experience it you're the director of how you think you direct like when you understand and how much you need to understand uh -huh. so there's less friction in the actual learning aspect of school when you're the one teaching yourself technically mm -hmm. and, and of course died. And, of course, this way the teachers as well, too, when they're immersed as well, too, they learn as well. And they can share. And if the students see something new, they can share with the teachers. And this encourages more interaction. Now, if you had a way to 24-7 connect the teachers and students to increase and foster that learning experience, then you would have the greatest thing in the world. And that's what we've created, a social network that ties everything together, increasing mm -hmm. engagement. So when ideas are had, they're dispersed to the right people at the right time when mm -hmm. they need it.
Mm-hmm. It, it does sound great, too. You've also got the attention of a couple of shows. But first, I'd like to remind you, you're listening to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show is brought to you by Evan Find of the Senior Reserve Group. When you start thinking about retirement, who you can call about Medicare? Why call the best? Evan Fine of Senior Reserve Group, specializing in Medicare, health, and long-term care insurance. Evan can be reached at 1-800-650-9357. That's 1-800-650-9357 or Evan Fine at SeniorReserveGroup.com. Evan is licensed in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, South Carolina, and Florida. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. Also on Facebook at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can also listen do- listen and download on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and also watch the interview on YouTube as well. And, of course, um, with all technology there, you can probably experience the Mike Wagner show with, with the equipment you got as well, Ross. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, we have to talk. We should make a Mike Wagner show in virtual reality. Oh, I think that'd be great, too. And, of course, you know, I think cloning is a good reason to be legal. Just put my face on there. AI, I don't care. And, of course, I can g- be just about everywhere. It saves on travel costs. I love it. I think we have a great idea of going right here, right now. <laughs> It literally takes one headset, $200, and you could literally stream from VR. Yes, that's right. That's right. And, of course, you know, we got to all those great ideas. You've been uh, featured in a couple of uh, nationwide uh, TV shows, Shark Tank and Elevator Pitch. They seemed uh, very interested in your product. But, of course, you know, of course, you, you've been on the show. And uh, tell us a result about um, what happened on the show and what they have to say. So with Shark Tank, it was a short-lived journey. I went on, did the interview, then did a recording video, got called back, got sent a contract to appear, and then actually I turned Shark Tank down on the total even appearance because of the contract. And for anyone listening to the Mike Wagner Show right now, if you're trying to go to Shark Tank, just know that there is a royalties percent in effect immediately before you even make a deal which means if you walk away without a deal you pay royalties really it's crazy and and how much (laughs) and how much a percentage of royalties do you have to pay three percent and it dropped from five to three and i still think it's wrong oh my goodness abc for because you're going to appear that's what they want i I, I, I i didn't even go on but i was accepted to appear on season 10 amazing that's amazing i mean i can i can imagine your know, royalties you know from five to three percent and depends on how successful it is and yeah. it sounds like you would be but then you're also an elevator pitch as well too yeah. so tell us what so happened then, on that so that was a much more full-fledged experience i was at an event for entrepreneurship with my team and we decided to speak to the people we gave them a demo it, it started out as a demo and they were like you have to you know, inter- like do the interview for the show and that we think you're going to get on. So we did the interview, forgot about it, went somewhere for a conference in LA, flew back, then got noticed we were going to appear on the show. So we, we went to LA and we were met with 27 different entrepreneurs. Uh, they searched every single state of the United States of America, over 800,000 people, only to come up with 70. Wow. And so we were, for anyone who wants to see it, it's on season three, episode three, called uh, Class Act or Circus Act. And I assure you, it's a class act. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds like a class act with all the circus clowns and class clowns and everything else. So I guess you kind of wonder with the uh, the new virtual reality, do you encourage any class clowns on there, you think? Or are they just keep it strict? What do you think? <laughs> Well, in, in our classes, even the worst of the kids end up doing better because they're not enough, they're not left alone enough to start to do bad things. Uh-huh. The experience is completely closed on both ends and monitored, and they're too engaged. They just love it. They love the idea of starting a company in, you know, eighth grade. They've never done that, and that's fun. That's so. 
<laughs> that does sound amazing too. And you say you've got some um, in in New York and New Jersey, and um, you know, once again, uh, tell us um, where are some of the states that you're in, and how many schools are currently using us. And you're looking at um, other states and. Tell us about that, and um, what is the current progress when it comes to getting these new devices in? So, um, basically, we're physically in about six different states, and we are in Canada as well. We are available in every single state. So, for anyone who's listening, if you contact um, Mike Wagner or you visit us at webguys.school, W-E-B-G-U-Y-Z, you can request us, or if you can just tell your school you want the Web Guys program, we're available. Part of having a vendor license is being available in the entire Department of Education. And, and then, how, how about um, you know other schools like overseas? Uh, any chance of uh, hitting the European markets, like say with yeah, um, so- England, Japan, or say like with um, France, or even the Philippines, or even Russia? Any uh, any anything that works out there? Yeah, so we actually just, we had a recent endeavor with Canada, and we're looking to expand in other countries. It's, there's no uh, issue behind it, not even financial. It's just making sure that there's people in those places that can provide the ground level, amazing support that we, we provide. I wouldn't want to tarnish the quality of what we do just to expand. But we are definitely looking to go the entire globe because the Internet's everywhere. So why aren't we? Mm-hmm. That is amazing too. And what do you, what do you consider the biggest challenge when it comes to your company and with the schools and um, how to market the product? What do you consider the biggest challenge ever since you've been doing web guys? So the, I would say there's like three huge challenges. Uh, the first challenge is finding the right person. Um, my partner in web guys is Irene Kukaj and without him, none of this would be possible. It's not even about the idea. It's finding someone that can actually care about something that you care about because if two people care about the same thing, it's automatically better than one. Mm-hmm. And it's a step in the right direction. And then the other struggle I would I would say is after you're like, amazing, I found the greatest partner, life is great. It's like, okay, now you have to employ people and you need employees, which are total strangers who have to cradle the greatest thing in your life in their hands. Mm-hmm. And that has been one of the biggest struggles because I've had over 500 interviews and my team is still currently only at about 15. Wow. That, that sounds like a big challenge itself as well, too. And of course, you also mentioned another challenge and, um, you know, just uh, talk about that yeah. before we get into so some other the third things. Challenge is the one of the most important, I would say, is if your product is remotely dealing with the Internet, which most are, mine is 100 percent the Internet. So I built everything with me and Irene together. We built it for two years before going public. Mm-hmm. That's over 50 different applications and five curriculums, which are to date now award-winning for two years straight. That is amazing too. And um, also, have you also looked at any foreign languages or anything like that? And um, and and what what are, what are the chances of having uh, foreign languages being involved too? So our platforms, because of the internet and all its capabilities, go into all different languages. So if you're saying, can someone that speaks a different language utilize our curriculum? The answer is yes. Okay. If you're asking, do we teach foreign language? We're working on it. But we think it's not a textbook that you need. Imagine subtitles in real life and avatars teaching you a different language, mm-hmm. like a person that's not there. That That's is what we're looking at. That is amazing too. And of course, you know, you know, just one more thing before we um you know jump on to um a, a next thing here. And um how about the special needs like the handicap or say with the blind and also the um hearing impaired and um or um like special needs like disabilities and do you guys have special products for that or is it just like anybody can use this? So the way it works is we on the back end provide special support with the content that is delivered to students that have special needs. But the coolest part is if you have a classroom, which is a bunch of dynamic children, all at different uh, levels in intelligence and mental stature, our, um, our infrastructure uses machine learning and it allows each student to get their own individualized learning. So that means if there's like 
three or four special ed children in a class, which is a pretty high percentage because a lot of kids, they don't even know. And if the parent doesn't know, then it's not registered. So then the students like treat it as regular, you know? Mm-hmm. 